uh, on the chapter on quick parts. So if I click down here, it's going to say, hey, do you want to do some built-in text boxes? You can use sidebars and all kinds of different things that, you, that you're looking at. And they've got some really cool ones, you know, about these text boxes that are going to be free-floating. Or what I like to do is just draw my own text box. Now when I do this, it's going to come up, and you notice that my cursor has now changed to a cross there, a little plus sign, a little bullseye crosshairs as some people like to call it and so what I do is I click and I draw the approximate size of the text box that I want let's say I want to put a little uh, a caption underneath that tuba about the tuba and who it is and you know that type of thing so I release that and you'll notice that the text box tools now show up where I have the text box styles and I can use some of the, the, the abilities to change it I can add 3D effects to it you know whatever I want to do rotate it make a little cube I can add shadow effects to it you know what what do you what do you want to do with it and notice I'm you know moving the shadow effects on the text box so I've got a lot of really cool features that I can use with text boxes that I can't do with just standard typed in text now you can format and do some stuff but text boxes rock I use them quite a bit because then I can choose where I want that text box to be I can even make sure that there are no lines around it but in this case we'll do it so in this case I'm gonna tell everyone that this is a Wilson BB 3100 and now I want to place this text down here now inside just so you understand inside the text box I can still make changes to the font you know do you know maybe make it a brush script or you know change it up to you know more of an aerial uh, look I can change the font size if I want you know on on any of this and let's say I want to make it a little smaller make it 10 and now I can you know I've got the formatting on my text within the text box notice it doesn't affect any of the text out here just the text within the text box that I've highlighted and used now if I select the box you'll notice that I can you know you know select it and then I can move it if I want just by clicking up here and moving it around I can also resize it by using the anchor points just like I did before so I can you know say well I don't need that big of a text box let's bring it down here oops went a little too far there we go it's looking good I'm just making adjustments so now I have my little text box there so now I can come over here and pick it up and bring it right over here on my tuba so now it says it's the Wilson BB 3100 by the way if I want to move this text box I don't need to use my mouse I can also use my keyboard controls I got my arrow keys watch this I'm clicking you can hear me click and see it's you know moving it around you know Yahoo here we go Wilson BB 3100 so now I've created this text box and again remember this is a graphic element notice I still have the ability to do text wrapping where I can wrap text around this box you know it's a graphic element where it's positioned I can send it to the front or you know bring it to the front of text or send it behind text you know I can you know group these objects together so all of these things that we can do are, are available to us now if I want to make any changes to some 3d effects maybe add some I can scroll down here and say wow I want to change it to Wilson BB 3100 or you know change the effects all I need to do is just simply click on whatever effect I want and then change it whether that there's a 3d different color for that particular one it kind of shows you what the colors would look like how deep is it 0 0.36 72 you know add there direction you know you can add which direction it, it, it goes you can do the lighting you know and this is kind of neat it shows you where the light source is I mean, I, how can you not love every single you want it matted do you want it plastic do you want it metal do you want it to look like a wireframe I mean there are so many neat options that you can do with text boxes because again it's a graphic element it's not just standard text that's typed on the page well we got started on our journey here in the graphic world of Word 2007 we saw how we can use the simple clip art galleries that are available not only within Word but also out on Office Online to pick some really neat artwork and stick it in there and manipulate it we also saw we can insert any pictures we have I mean if you have scanners or uh, cameras and you've put in some pictures that are graphic files you can insert those pictures same thing manipulate them and then we saw how we can now take text and create visual elements 
experience with the text itself and creating these text boxes which can be manipulated just like a piece of artwork just like the clip art the pictures and the things that you'll see now there are also other cool things like word art and smart art and some things that we'll show you but sometimes text boxes are very simple very easy ways to enhance visually what you're doing in your word document I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing Microsoft Word 2007 using graphics part 2 now you didn't think we were gonna leave you without showing you how to draw pretty pictures of course you probably want to use an artist because <laughs> I'm not really good at drawing but the nice thing is is that Word 2007 gives you some basic tools that allow you to draw some uh, pretty passable graphics for those of you who are familiar with Word, especially in the older versions, you'll know that anytime you use graphics, there are two things that Microsoft has supplied to us in the past, auto shapes and word art. Auto shapes gives us those really neat arrows and circles and, you know, some basic shapes to allow us to add, I always want to say, a little bit more formal, formidable clip art where you can add a banner or a star and then you can manipulate the fill color, the lines and some things like that. Word art means you take text and you can say, well, you know what, I want to add drop shadows, make it 3D. I want to do some, you know, cool things with that. And then stay tuned. At the very end of this nugget, I've got a little exam tip for you and that and I think you're going to really enjoy. So we're going to go ahead and open up to get started our third quarter sales report that we're going to put together. And I've already, you know, typed a few things in to kind of get us started. First off, we got our third quarter sales results for Acme Musical Instruments Incorporated. And we have a little bit of text typed in. But let's say we want to start adding some more visual pops, more cues to this to really, when people either read it on their screen or they print it up, that it, you know, it looks pretty snazzy. Well, the, one of the first things that we'll find is that unlike Word 2003, which utilized a drawing canvas all the time, here you have a choice on what you want to do. Now, the one thing we're going to find out is, besides the Bad, how bad I can draw is you go to your insert tab on your ribbon and you'll find that your illustrations now we've already seen the clip the clip art and the pictures and how to do that in the previous nugget but now we can see we can insert shapes smart art the charts the things that we're gonna take a look at next shapes for example so if I click on the down arrow here, I get all of my recently used shapes, which are kind of fun. We also have lines, basic shapes, block arrows, flow chart, call outs, stars, banners. I mean, look at all these things that we have. And you'll see that we also have the new drawing canvas. Now, first off, let's start off with the basics. What if I just want to add a shape? Let's say I wanted to go ahead and uh, create uh, just a, a merely a circle. Well, I can either come up here to my recently sh used shape or go down to basic shapes and say I want to use a circle or an oval. And then I go ahead and just click on it. Now, when I click on it, you'll notice that I get my crosshairs here. And I can go anywhere on my document and then click, hold, and it creates an oval shape. Now, here's a little trick. Now, you'll notice that whenever I move my mouse, it just kind of goes any which way that it wants to. So it can, you know, kind of bulge and form any type of oval shape. If you want this to stay uniform, all you need to do, like let's say I want to make sure that my circle stays a circle no matter what, you simply hold down the Shift key. Now, see how I did that? I hit the Shift key, and now no matter what, I am going to get a circle, no matter where I put this thing. If I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that, I release the shift key and now I can size it in any form that I want. Now when I release this, it automatically opens up, as we always said, anytime you done, do something new, you typically are going to get another tab. In this case, it's going to be the drawing tools and the formatting that we can use here. So now I've selected my little oval shape that I have here, just to kind of show you how this works and from here I have a lot of different things that I can do one of the advantages remember of utilizing office 2007 is the ability to instantly preview any change you're gonna make before you actually make it so in this case if I come up here and I notice I have my shape styles right now it's just a a line a black line let's say I want to see what it would look like with a white uh, border with a black fill so when I roll my mouse over that, you look down, you go, wow, okay. It's a colored fill white outline with, a, you know, the dark, 
that looks good okay or I can look at the blue I can just you know roll my mouse over it and it shows me what it's gonna look like with the particular accents now these are pre-built shape styles you can of course make personal changes based upon what fill like these already have fill outline what the, what it is dark shadow put applied to it where here I can just simply click on it and say well I want to just change the theme colors and now as I roll my mouse over I can see the uh, the different fill colors I should say these are the themes that are applied we'll talk about styles and themes in another nugget but uh, here you can see how we can just roll over and see what kind of fill colors we want to use from the theme colors. Now here are the actual colors, the theme, and then you can get different gradients. You know, this is the, uh, the uh, we'll, we'll go here with the uh, tan, and this is a background too, it's darker by 10%, and this is darker by 25%, and this is 50%, so you can see these. You have just standard colors, your reds, you know, your Roy Jabiv, you know, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, I think is how you do that. And then you can say, well, no, I don't want any fill, you want more fill colors you can look up and create your own, you can add a picture, you can fill the shape with the picture, you can make it a gradient. Now this is kind of neat, you can add different and of course you can change the colors of the gradients and just kind of highlight each one of these and these are kind of neat and you have so much more I remember when the uh, office products first came out I mean you were just happy just to fill it with a solid uh, circle in the middle of your report now you got gradients you've got textures you can use take a look at this I mean you can add like a marble green marble like a little water bubble paper bag, you got the uh, fossil fish eye, you know, thing, you have a whole bunch of things that you can do, and even patterns. So these are ways that you can now manipulate the actual object, the drawing object that you have placed. Now, I've created, of course, this one, uh, you know, circle here, and you know, and you can, you know, create that. You can also add shadow effects. So if I click down here, it'll tell me what my shadow effects are. Now you can see some of these um, right here. You can add shadow style 10. You can add uh, shadow style 11. You can do where it, it shows you where the actual shadow appears, and you can make any changes what the shadow color itself is. You know the blue, and it runs you through all those. So the many different effects there with the shadow effects. That's kind of neat. And now you can even go up here and do 3D effects. So if I click here, you know, I can change the 3D effects. So you can make it look a little bit, uh, you know, different. Anything that you can think of. Click on the down arrow and you can do 3D colors, the depth that it has on, you know, the different things. And you can see right here I'm adding, you know, a 288 point depth to the, you know, thing. Or the direction that it is. And it gives you, you know, the different directions. What kind of lighting do you want it to appear? How the how the light plays across. I mean, this stuff is, it's crazy. I mean, you want it to look like metal, plastic, a wireframe. I mean, it's, you know, incredible all of the things that you can now do. In fact, uh, a friend of mine once said that, you know, in Word nowadays, you really don't necessarily need some of these third-party tools to create at least basic objects and pictures and do some basic things. Now, understand this. Obviously, if you're a professional graphic artist and you're putting something out that's print quality, you're probably going to want to take your graphics and create them in Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or, or one of those really powerful programs and then import them. Much easier. That way you can control a whole lot more. But I mean, it's getting better and better in the Office products on what you can produce on the fly rather quickly. So what we've seen so far, I can create a basic shape. I can then come up and I get my formatting, my drawing tools for the particular object. I can use pre-built shape styles. I can then create individual settings for each one of the things that I want to do, even change the shape by while preserving the format. Shadow shapes, we've already talked about this. Positioning is the same as what we saw with our text boxes and our clip art, and that is the position on the page, whether you want to, as an object, put it to the front or back, the text wrapping around it. Uh, you can also change things like how you align it, uh, the grouping, and of course, if you want to rotate and flip the object. Now, of course, with an oval object, you know, rotating and flipping isn't going to uh, do do much. If I rotate it, uh, you know, uh, 90 degrees or right 90 degrees, flip vertical, I mean, it looks pretty much the same. I mean, there's not much you can do with that, but that's okay. I mean, if you had a different object, you might want to, you know, change the, the way things go. You also have the power of actually creating an actual specific size. If you know the exact size on the page that you need this object to be, simply come up here to click size and input whatever the height and width is. 
So that's what we have for each one of these objects. Now the problem is, if I create um, these objects, and uh, let's say I create one.